Hey looters, it's Flutes here. I want to talk to you today about my top 10 ideas I've had for running mind flayers in different campaigns, either as side villains or as entire campaign arcs. I've been fascinated with mind flayers and terrified of them ever since they kept wiping out my entire party when I played Baldur's Gate 2. But without further ado, let's get into some mind flayer ideas. Now my first idea is for an arcane cerebral thief. Mind flayers, mind you, they frown upon using magic and they'll even cast out or kill their own people, illithids, who practice magic. But those that are seduced by magic find an insatiable hunger and they will do anything to learn more magic and increase their skill with it. One way that they might do that is by consuming the brains of prominent spellcasters, particularly wizards, since their mastery of magic is cerebral. It's not based on their biology. It's not based on gods giving them power. It's all spells that they've learned to cast using the weave and the magical energies of the world. So if an illithid can consume their brain and learn everything they've learned and find their spellbook, steal it, they can learn a lot very quickly. As a DM, you could set up a story arc or even a one-shot adventure where the party must investigate recent murders of prominent wizards. I do recommend hiding the fact that an illithid, a mind flayer, has been eating their brains, though. Make it so the wizards have been found with the, their bodies decapitated and the heads unfound. Then it just seems like something else is going on, but it's not like their head is there and their brain is not. That'd be a little too obvious. Um, you could also make it so they are crushed, like their whole bodies are just mangled and destroyed and burned as the illithid covers its tracks. Or maybe the wizards have been going missing entirely and no one knows where they are, and the illithid has managed to just eat their brains off somewhere private. Make sure that the mind flayer has some sort of escape route. Maybe there's a river going through the town, and mind flayers, they like to stay moist and out of the sun. So they'll strike at night uh, when it's dark, and it is cool, and the river is a great place for them to infiltrate from. Confrontation with that mind flayer could take the form of a stakeout, as the party camps out at a wizard that they suspect will be targeted next uh, at their wizard tower or home, and wait for something to appear. Just make sure to play it up when the mind flayer appears, instead of just being like a mind flayer walks in the room. Have them get a psychic buzz in their mind, and a long shadow appears in a doorway, and maybe they get hypnotized a little bit, like Ka from the Jungle Book has looked deeply into their eyes and they become helpless, but maybe a few people in the party are not and they start freaking out. They thought they were just going to be dealing with some murderer, but they're dealing with an otherworldly mind flayer that could eat their brains. And don't forget that mind flayer has been studying magic. That mind flayer is going to have some powerful spells. Pick some that maybe fit the psychic theme as well, like synaptic static or hypnotic pattern. That's a great way to take out or nerf a lot of the party members right off the bat, and they'll be in a panic as they bit off more than they can chew. Idea number two, eugenics. <laughs> mind flayers believe themselves to be a master race, and all should be slaves to them. But mind flayers also have a process where their little tadpole buddies, their babies, slurp into other creatures and kind of work like the xenomorph from the alien movies, where they, they don't, like pop out of the chest but they do end up morphing that body to resemble a mind flayer and it becomes a mind flayer um, that tadpole has become that creature and morphed it into a mind flayer but that mind flayer might have a little bit of alteration to its form that could be fun if it was a yuan t maybe it's got an elongated body but it's still a mind flayer uh, mind flayers might go for some very powerful creatures to try to turn them into mind flayers like a sphinx a dragon or a treant. Just picture a couple of trees in a forest coming to life and you think that you're just going to get mashed by some treants, but you look up and they've got tentacles and huge maws where they want to suck out your brain and they lift people up to the top of the... F yeah, it's a terrifying thought. But mind flayers, maybe they have in your campaign some kind of goal of eugenics where they're trying to perfect themselves even more by gaining the traits of other races as they transform them into mind flayers. I picture this kind of like the Borg from Star Trek. They always terrified me as a kid, how they just adapt and become immune to the phasers after a little while. And they just have this hive mind like mind flayers, and they just march forth and they 
assimilate. They turn everything into the Borg. They also might just gain some annoying traits, like if they turn a Kenku into a Mind Flayer, they might just become like this parrot version of a Mind Flayer that bugs all the other Mind Flayers, and they've got like a really long beak, more so than the other Mind Flayers. I don't know. There might be some weird variations like that. One of my DMs did something that I really liked, which was we had to protect an ancient creature, but we had to keep the Mind Flayers from reaching it, because if they reached it, they could gain its memories and learn very important things about how to do really bad things like become a god <laughs> um, so that kind of stuff can be really fun where the players need to keep mind flayers from finding certain creatures uh, maybe that's because of the knowledge they'll gain or the physical traits up to you but you can have some fun with eugenic mind flayer plots number three is a deadly interrogation I once ran a campaign where at the very beginning the players were captured into a, a prison because they used magic in a, a, a city that doesn't allow magic I know it's cliche but it's still fun that's why it's cliche people like to do it and so they're in this anti-magic prison, and um, I ended the session with them seeing another magic user uh, being dragged from his cage and put in a chair. And then this mind flayer is pushed into the room with a helmet on, cause, so it can't use its psychic abilities, and it's tied up. And they make the mind flayer latch onto the guy and eat his brain because he wouldn't talk. And so this was their way of interrogating people. The mind flayer, they would starve. And then they would force it to uh, tell them what it learned from eating the person's brain afterward. So in that prison, you did not want to be interrogated. You did not want to deny them the information they needed because you would get mind flayer eaten. So if you want to really scare the party, let them perceive something like that happening, knowing that there's some really bad stuff that will happen if they don't get out of there. Alternatively, you can have the party need to gain some important information from someone and they find some rogue mind flayer. I think Critical Role did this where they found a mind flayer that ended up being like a kind of ally to them in like one of their very first episodes of their first campaign. And uh, maybe your party could find a similar uh, shaky alliance with a mind flayer where they need that mind flayer to eat a brain and tell them what it learns. But they also need to trust what it says because it might withhold information. So you could have some fun with that. All right, the next one I call Culinary Killers, which I get some inspiration from the Buffy the Vampire Slayer episode called The Gentleman, where those guys just kind of float around with big smiles on their faces, and no one can speak, and they act like gentlemen. They're well-dressed and polite and clean. Uh, so picture some mind flayers that are very picky eaters, and they want to experience culinary delights. They want to feast on the most intellectual brains that are around. So certain creatures or prominent wizards or politicians who have deep secrets of the realm or have experienced arcane mysteries that the uh, mind flayers would find delectable mm, yes tasty um, they could be snatching up people who are intelligent for this purpose um, this might work well in a setting where mind flayers are known to exist and maybe even have power uh, in the in the world uh, and they do what they want, and people know that they can, and so they try to hide people who are intelligent to avoid becoming a course in a Mind Flayer's meal. The Mind Flayers also might season their meals by forcing people to do difficult math problems or to solve uh, Sudoku puzzles, uh, get their brains warmed up so that when the Mind Flayers dig in <laughs> the the brain is like well seasoned and warmed up for the meal and don't forget mind flayers have thralls they might have servants that go out and find people who have great intelligence and these are kind of like the taste makers for the mind flayers they scout out translators of ancient languages who have studied many languages and it's made them very intelligent and tasty or they might find doctors who have vast experience with medicine uh, to get that uh, different kind of flavor. Uh, these mind flayers are seeking a culinary experience and you do not want to be on the menu. Bonus, if you pack these mind flayers with insults like Gordon Ramsay, <laughs> um, these guys should be very eloquent and insulting in an uppity way. So look up some things that Gordon Ramsay has said to people on his shows who have cooked poorly or even cooked well and have these mind flayers pack a few one-liners. Idea number five, subconscious culture manifestation. When illithids are eating the minds of other creatures, they might pick up a little bit of baggage in their personalities that they didn't count on. 
Some illithids may even go rogue as they've dined on some tabaxi brains and it's made them have overly explorative minds that make them break away from their hive mind and become pirates or explorers. Uh, it'd be really strange for your party to encounter some mind flayers who aren't just master race, hive mind, crazy, scary monsters. They're just explorers. That would be strange. And so just picture mind flayers dining on different races and maybe not all the mind flayers handled it too well and they had subconscious manifestations of those races cultures in their own mind flayer personalities how might that play out it's up to you have some fun idea number six an informative funeral mind flayers have a practice of preserving the minds of their fallen comrades in jars briny little brain jars if your party knows that someone has died to a mind flayer that had important information, they know that that mind flayer now has important information in its mind. But that mind flayer also died, the party finds out, and that mind flayer's brain was put in a jar and preserved right next to the elder brain of a mind flayer hive, along with all the other jars of their fallen mind flayer comrades. Your party's going to need to infiltrate and reach that elder brain and steal or seize one of those jars and figure out which jar it is and find some way to gain the information that is within the jar. If you don't want to go this way, you could have it be that just a mind flayer ate somebody and you need to find that mind flayer and get it to talk. It's much simpler, it's more of an interrogation tactic, but I really like using the mind flayer tradition of the jars and the brain broth brain brine that goes in there. So I recommend trying that out. I think you'll have some fun with it. I did number seven, Fievel Goes West. What? If you've seen that movie, you know at the very beginning, the cats force the mice to migrate west in the United States uh, to some podunk town. Mind flayers might similarly try to get their thralls to force a certain people or demographic out of a town and try to go live somewhere else. And the mind flayers might be... Uh, grooming them, let's say, to be consumed later once they've accumulated a lot of those people and the mind flayers have them under their power. So it almost becomes like a, they're creating like a herd or they're farming people. Idea number eight. This is a campaign idea where it's basically the matrix. Everyone's plugged into a simulation. The mind flayers are feeding off of people's thoughts as they live in an illusory world. Um, there's a lot of ways you could go about this. The Matrix went in it in a way where certain people get out of the Matrix, out of the illusory world, and they know the world is really apocalyptic. It's not this perfect world or even normal world that it was in the illusory uh, reality that they had broken out of. And so this is like an apocalyptic idea where your party can be a bunch of revolutionaries fighting against the Mind Flayers, trying to free uh, mankind or whatever races are being uh, farmed for their thoughts by the mind flayers. So review the matrix and think mind flayers instead of a computer program and have fun with that. Idea number nine, save the future. Mind flayers are known for having not much known about them. Are they from the future? Are they from the past? Uh, some believe that they came from the future where they already conquered all creatures and now they're just going through different material planes and times to expand their empire across time and space. But maybe, in your setting, Mind Flayers do come from the future where they beheld the end of the world and maybe they caused it, maybe they just witnessed it. But your party could be dealing with Mind Flayers and have the unexpected uh, treat of having a seeded plot where they find out that the end of the world is coming as they're dealing with these Mind Flayers in the present and they've realized that they have to learn from the mind flayers, not just wipe them out, they have to learn how the end of the world is going to happen. And once they do, they'll have an, a high level adventure to look forward to after this mind flayer subplot that they're dealing with is settled. Um, they could try to slow the end of the world, they could try to prevent it. The solution shouldn't be obvious because the mind flayers failed to prevent this calamity itself with their time traveling ability. So maybe the party's going to have to be really creative. Maybe they just have to stop different political powers from being at war. Maybe there needs to be peace so that they work together so that when some ancient god rears its head to end the world and the material plane, the people will have armies that can work together to face it. Who knows? 
That's up to you. Idea number 10 is the grand design. There's a creature called an Ulithrid. It's a variant of the Illithid, where it basically rises up as like a wannabe queen bee. It wants to be the next elder brain, and it's supposed to kind of take its portion of the hive and go start its own hive. But in order to become an elder brain, it needs to feast on the highborn, powerful creatures of the realm. Your characters, your party, could have a goal where they are trying to stop the spread of a mind flare plague that is sweeping through a nation. Um, different highborn noble families are attacked by the mind flayers um, so that this ulithrid can consume their brains and further its goal of becoming an elder brain. One of the big fun points of this is going to be the party trying to figure out which among the NPCs are thralls of the mind flayers that are helping them with their goals. So you're not just going to be fighting mind flayers in this campaign. You're going to be fighting different factions that have been manipulated by the mind flayers. You're going to figure out some subterfuge has been happening as mind flayers are pulling the strings behind the scenes using their thralls. Another thing you could do is have the Ulithrid gain the knowledge of a powerful artificer. Um, one thing that happens to Mind Flayers commonly is they are taken out by the Gith Yankee who hunt them through time and space to get revenge for the times that the Mind Flayer enslaved them. So Gith Yankee might come to take out these Mind Flayers, but maybe they've gained some sort of technological advantage by consuming the minds of powerful artificers, creating cannons and other defenses that the Gith Yankee are not ready for, so the Mind Flayer are able to defeat them. This could allow for the party to enlist uh, the help of Gith Yankee, who have failed to take out the uh, Ulithrid and its Mind Flayer army, and maybe uh, find some kind of alliance with the Gith Yankee that would provide information to help them deal with the Mind Flayers. Because you don't want the party to just always be in the dark about what the Mind Flayers are doing. So get them some allies that maybe have some expertise that could inform the party at higher levels of what they could do, and maybe help them um, in some important endeavors. And don't be afraid to use Volo's Guide to Monsters, which suggests things like the Nautiloids, which are big organic ships. You know, I picture like the overlords of the Zerg in StarCraft that are like starships for um, the Mind Flayers. You know, this Ulithrid is leading a Mind Flayer society. So review Volo's Guide to Monsters and see everything that goes on in Mind Flayer uh, societies and see what their goals are, how they might be role played. And really play up this Ulithrid as this war-mongering mind flayer who wants to start its own hive, but it needs to achieve its goals first. It's basically going to be your BBEG that you want to have the characters fear and respect. Bonus idea, <laughs> my kids like to watch Paw Patrol, and I just think it would be funny to have a mind flayer that talks like Captain Turbot. Uh, he speaks with alliteration all the time, uses big words, and he's just like this happy-go-lucky guy. I just thought it would be funny to have a mind flare sometime that maybe has a, a dent in his head. Maybe he strayed from his hive because of it. And so he's just doing his own thing. He's just this happy-go-lucky mind flare who, caps, who talks like Captain Turbot from Paw Patrol. Just make sure you write his dialogue ahead of time because alliteration is a big part of it. You'll impress the party with the alliteration. All right, so that's it. I guarantee I've given you some kind of idea for something you can do with mind flares in your campaign. Have some fun with it. Let me know which... Uh, of the ideas sounded most fun to you or which ones you've used before uh, go ahead and cast message in the comments below I'd love to have a conversation with you and check out flutesloot.com we've got lots of articles about everything D&D &D. we just love talking about D&D &D. thanks guys happy adventuring